of the things that affords us that ability to do that is we are a mutual insurance company. Now, don't be ashamed if you don't know what a mutual insurance company is. But basically, we don't have stockholders. The people that own a surety are the policy holders. So if you have a policy with a surety, then you're one of the owners of, uh, of the organization. And so what that does is, is if we make a bunch of money, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, we have to stay solvent for our members. But as we have things, as we pay out, and we are able to pay out these claims, those are things that we celebrate internally here within the organization of saying, hey, look, you know, we paid out $300 million this year in, in life insurance claims, right? These are, you know, this is a way for us to help people through difficult times, which is our mission of really trying to affect uh, and help people as they have to undergo some of these traumatic, traumatic and difficult times. Uh, but we've been around a really long time. So been around about 130 years. And over those 130 years, you can imagine, we have built up some bureaucracy. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's kind of this weird conundrum, right? We have been successful as an organization because we are conservative. And we're not, uh, and we, we understand the risk that we're taking and then we price it accordingly. Well, when you start thinking about innovation and doing things differently, it then becomes a little bit more difficult. So some of the things, as you're looking at uh, insurance, like you come in and you say, okay, how much do you make, if I come in and I get a, let's say a, a million dollar life insurance policy uh, for you know thousand dollars a year or something, we don't know exactly how much we're going to make on that policy. A lot of it depends on how long you live. So we do our best guess of figuring out when you're gonna die, and then we price it accordingly. So if you try to do something new or different, or with a new group, now all of a sudden we don't know how that group is going to act, or how that risk is going to be pulled together. So we may not know for 10 years whether or not it was a good idea. I, I like to, to talk about it as bowling in the dark. You've got, uh, you flip the lights on, you see where the pins are, you shut the lights off, you grab your ball, you roll it down, you kind of hear something going on down there, and then you flip on the lights 10 years later and figure out how many pins you knocked down and how well you did. Uh, now we've got a lot of data and we've got, you know, we've got over a century's worth of data to be able to guess more appropriately if we're making money or not. But that's one of the things that, that faces us. We've got a ton of data, but haven't been really good at analyzing and understanding that data and how to use that to improve mortality rates. Uh, there's also over 130 years, you can imagine, you know, a surety is a conglomeration of three different companies uh, that were melded together here uh, in Lincoln. Well, they all each had different systems that they were working on. So you've got all these different systems, so even just getting it onto one system, and then you gotta think hundreds of thousands of policies on these systems, and so when you wanna try to do an upgrade, you've got all these older systems, and it's very, very painful. So it's difficult to move fast. The other kind of major problem that is facing the insurance industry is how do you typically buy insurance when you go through an insurance agent? So it's this face-to-face -face kind of interaction. And that's the way I would say about 99% of all insurance is sold. So you have this conundrum of you have these insurance agents that are selling face-to-face, -face, which is difficult to scale. So you've got these huge organizations. Well, there's one other thing. How many of you guys have been wanting to become an insurance agent? I raise of hands. Okay, so nobody woke up going like, I want to become an insurance agent. Like, that is my calling in life. That's what I'm going to do. So, the average age of an insurance agent now is about 57. Uh, so what happens in another eight years? 
And a lot of these insurance agents have made a lot of money. I mean, we're talking, they make a lot more money than most of us here. I would say they make more money than most of us here, right? They make a lot of money doing this, but nobody wants to go in and become an insurance agent. So you got this aging demographic, so are people just gonna stop buying insurance policies? No, so that, that's gotta be one of the, the issues of, of that, that, that people need to understand as you're facing this, and these are kind of more industry problems. We're, we're getting to the challenge. But just kind of setting up why insurance, why now, and why this should be a focus for our region and for our area. So InsurTech, is kind of the, the cool, new, sexy term that is attracting a lot, a lot, a lot of capital. But basically, insurance, uh, insure tech is just insurance and technology. So you have got this old incumbent that does things one way and has done it for at least a century, and then you've got all these startup companies that go, look at those fat, loaded organizations that have thousands of people, hierarchies, and they've got these huge, beautiful buildings, they must be making money hand over fist. And so I tell you what, I bet we can do it better, faster, smarter than them. And then you have a lot of venture capitalists that go, you know what, I think you're right. So we are just going to pour a lot of money into that. And so uh, in 2017, there was $2.3 billion invested in insure tech companies in the US. Last year, in 2018, four billion dollars, just in the US. If you saw some of the valuations that I'm seeing that people are getting for a PowerPoint deck, and very little, I mean, it is just like, oh, you got a PowerPoint deck? Here's a five million dollar valuation, nice job. I mean, it is absolutely insane. And every venture capital uh, organization that you've heard of either already has built a insure tech fund or is raising one because it is so hot. And one of the things you have to understand as entrepreneurs is well, go where the money goes. If there's a lot of money chasing this, that's a lot of people looking to fund ideas. That's a lot of opportunity. Well, the other thing is, is you have all this money coming in, something's got to give. Something's got to give. In the first two months of this year, that just the top ten deals that happened were worth a, worth a billion dollars of capital invested in for 2019. So this thing is heating up, and I will tell you uh, here in Nebraska, I've talked with one company that has any traction on working on an insure tech idea. We've got like. 80 insurance companies. We've got Berkshire Hathaway, we got Geico. We've got a lot of different, we got Emeritus, we got Mutual of Omaha, we've got obviously a surety, which is the best of them all, right? Um, and, and what that tells you is there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of customers, and there's a lot of money being poured into this. You know, I think a lot of times people think, uh, you know, David taking on Goliath and and this uh, startup is going to come bring down the, you know, the insurance industry. I actually don't believe that's going to be the case. What I'm seeing, like at the very beginning, that was what the effort, until everybody got in and they realized how difficult and how much regulation there is with insurance. So there are limitations. You can't just do whatever you want. You can't just say whatever you want. So there are limitations on being able to do this and govern that. But What's starting to happen is these startup companies are saying, hey look, Big Brother Goliath, you've got billions of dollars. I mean, you look at a surety, and we've, we've got like five billion dollars in cash, right? We've got, we've got money to invest in. Now that's money that we have of our policyholders, like we have to be able to pay it out if needed to be. But we've got a lot of money, and we're just a small, small company here in Lincoln. You go, wow. That's a lot of money for Lincoln, Nebraska. But what that tells you is, is that there's a lot of opportunities. These insurance companies are saying, hey, look, why don't we partner together? You guys are big and slow. We're fast and speedy. 
and we'll come and tackle some of these problems for you. You partner with us, help shelter us from these regulators, and then let's work together. And so we're starting to see a lot of collaboration between insurance startups and the insurance uh, companies. And I think that that's really where the value lies and where the insurance market is gonna grow is in that collaboration between startups and insurance companies. Uh, I run the venture capital arm here at Assured. So all I do all day, day in, day out, is I look for startup companies to partner with and invest in. And, and that is something that you know, should tell you like, hey, we are serious about looking for companies to do this. Uh, and this challenge of what we were doing is, we were thinking of what can we do that is going to be applicable to a broad swath of people Nobody's listening to me now. It's okay. Just go ahead and read it if you want. Uh, like I just like it was just like there's the challenge. Uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to come up with a something that you could create a business around that would give you the opportunity to truly form a business, partnership and collaboration with us. But this is exactly what I'm looking for when I'm out hunting for startup companies. So beyond the, you know, the cash prize for this, and even the, you know, the potential for the $25,000 launch grant uh, from LPED, like, if you create something that is meaningful, like, we want to partner. We are willing to invest money in you and into this idea if you do something. Now, if you come up with a bunch of dumb ideas, we're not gonna do it, right? Um, but, but we want to get you guys excited about the fact that there is this huge opportunity for us in the Midwest that like, we honestly have a better opportunity to outcompete uh, our brethren on the coasts. So really, what we're trying to identify is a different kind of approach to understand kind of what this whole product market fit is. It would blow your mind if you knew how we came up with new insurance products. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with lean startup and product market fit and doing all of this. What we do when we look at pro to build a new product, we look left and we look right and we're like, oh, so-and-so company added this feature to their product. Let's add that into ours. Or let's do this over here. We need to get back down to basics and understand what customers are needed. What is that new insurance thing that is going to meet some need that's not being met right now? And, and historically, insurance has just done a horrible job at doing this. And I think that in lies a significant opportunity for all of us to be able to change the way that that, that, that comes out and happens. Now, we do have a handful of tools at your disposal to make this a lot easier. Why Assurity? I would say Assurity is quickly being known as one of the most innovative insurance companies in the nation. Uh, and one of the reasons why that has happened is because we've started to embrace technology and have looked to startups to help guide us down that path. So one of the things that we have is something called accelerated underwriting. Big term for, hey look, if I apply for an insurance uh, product, we've got some rules engines that will pull data, third party data, and make a decision whether, how long you're going to live. So like we know better than your doctor or anybody else, even your family members, how long you're going to live if you go in and you do this thing. So we built a, a, a huge engine that does all this. Now traditionally, let's say you wanted to go get life insurance, you'd have to go in, uh, you apply, typically in, in person, then you set up and you're gonna go, you're gonna get a blood draw, you're gonna do a urinalysis, they take that in, we look at your blood, we do, you know, we do this kind of physical thing, and then we make a decision on how long you're going to live. And it's based on a lot of data, a lot of different things. Well, what we figured out is we can grab enough, there's enough data out there that we can start polling and we've correlated that data with your mortality risk or how long you're going to live. And what we've done is we've built an engine 
that allows us to give people the opportunity to apply for insurance online and then buy it. Novel concept, buying insurance online, I get it, right? But up until just recently, that was not an option unless it was a, a really highly priced product that they just assumed everyone was sick and they just had to make it really uncompetitive. So we've been able through data to narrow that down to giving you a competitive product with the same type of pricing as you would have to come in and with a blood draw. And the best part is, is instead of figuring out what we thought people needed and how we would approach that, is we built a whole API overlay over our decision engine. So we said, hey look, we get it. We're a, you know, we're a stodgy insurance company and you insure, you insure tech startups can do it better. So here's your APIs. Why don't you go figure out how to tap into our backend engine and you figure out what is going to be the best way to overlay these products into some different affinity group, some different channel, some different buying process, some different lead generation source and say, hey look, if we tweaked this, this, and this, we could really just flow those people through. Maybe this is just an add-on purchase into something else. Hey, I'm going skydiving today and as I go to sign up for skydiving, I you know, pay an extra $5 and if I die, they pay me, you know, they pay my family a million, right? Who takes that bet when I'm going skydiving? Five bucks, you pay 10, 20, I don't know, that's product market fit. But giving you an idea of saying, hey look, instead of going through this process of long, maybe it's a micro insurance. Maybe it is something that is different. The beauty of it is, is we don't have to come up with all the answers, we just put it up to, to the startup community and entrepreneurs and say, hey look, here's some tools for you to be able to do this. So this website right here uh, gives you a portal to sign up, to gain access to the credentials to get your API credentials. Now in there, we've got a handful of products that are already developed on that have API access into it. So that's why these three products are listed. We do a lot of different products. But we've, uh, we've, we've already built in the API access for critical illness, disability, income, and term life. So for those that don't speak insurance speak uh, and don't feel bad, like critical illness, I didn't know existed until I started to work for surety. Uh, critical illness basically means if you have a heart attack, we'll just pay you out a lump sum. If you get cancer, we'll pay you out a lump sum. Any critical major illness, you have a stroke, you have these other things, we just pay you out a lump sum. And so you look and you go, oh, my dad had a heart attack at 60, my grandpa had a heart attack at 60. I had like, you start going like, oh, maybe I should get heart attack insurance. Same thing as saying that's critical illness insurance. Uh, disability income or disability insurance. That is like, you might get it through an employer, kind of a short term disability. If you get hurt or injured and you can't work, they cover your, uh, they cover part of, of what you'd make. So it's like, I'm sick and injured, I can't work, I get a paycheck coming in monthly for that time period. So that's what disability insurance is. And just a, a side note, I personally believe that disability insurance is one of like the best insurances that people have, and it's completely underrated. Uh, and you go to doctors and lawyers, and about 90% of all doctors and lawyers have disability insurance. You drop below doctors and lawyers and you go down into middle income, very, very, very few people have disability insurance. Now why is that? A couple different reasons. You gotta go back to this agent problem. You've got agents that are incentivized, huge commissions, to sell this. Traditionally, this product has taken six to eight weeks to sell. So if I'm gonna go sell a huge policy to some cardiothoracic surgeon, or I'm going to sell it to a construction worker, and it both takes me eight weeks, and I'm gonna make $10,000 commission on one, and I'm gonna make $300 commission on the other, where are you going to spend your time? And so the whole entire middle class has been left out of this, this what I think is one of the most important, this important insurances. You've got a one in four chance 
of becoming disabled in the next 20 years and not being able to work. The average disability is like two, two and a half, three years. Uh, your chance of dying while having an insurance policy is like one in 20. Lots of people have life insurance. Not very many people have disability. But with the API access and bringing it out to the masses, that should get your brain working of going, oh, well, if I don't physically have to talk to these people, I can start selling this to a lot of different people. But how do I do that? How do I educate people? Is it a needs assessment tool? Is it something else that creates some value up and beyond this, and then this is the afterthought of the product that comes in after it? You look at insurance as a whole. So uh, the insurance market is, is very large. I don't know, it's like a trillion dollars in the US. I mean, it's, it's huge. Uh, disability income is about, a, you know, it's a small, it's a small chunk, it's like $16 billion industry. Uh, but you gotta think of that compared with the larger insurance industry, it's just very, very small. Now, insurance, like life insurance, has been about stable for the last couple of decades. Same amount of revenue. Now, what's the problem with that? Our population is growing, but the income is staying the same which means fewer and fewer people are actually getting that insurance, which goes back to that, we're missing something. Millennials, not buying life insurance. How do you figure out, like, why are we missing that channel? Does it need to be a new type of insurance? As I listed down these things, I listed the, the three different products. We've got like 26, 32 products, I don't know, of different insurance products that, that Assurity does. We've got the APIs for these three for the decision making. We've got quoting access for APIs for a lot more, but the actual decision online are those three, which is why I listed it. Now for this challenge, you can come up with a whole new different type of insurance. It could be something that doesn't exist out there. Um, and, and we're not gonna dock you for that. It's a great idea. We're just saying, hey look, here's some tools for you to be able to utilize to do this. So if you come up with something random and different, that's great. If you wanna come up with something that's in the insure tech industry in general, that's fine as well. You know, I will tell you that you know, the challenge winners are gonna be something in the life or supplemental health space, uh, you know, unless it is a PNC property and casualty, like a homeowner's, buying insurance that then could cross sell in something else, right? It's gotta somehow benefit, I always call Assurity the mothership. Uh, you know, it's gotta figure out how to benefit the mothership in some way, shape, or form, but doesn't have to, you don't have to feel like you're tied into this tight box. But just to kind of make it, you know, more applicable to other people, uh, it, uh, we, we've kind of broadened that up. So a handful of limitations, just so you know, uh, part of the industry, so there are some guidelines put out by the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, or NAIC for short, and they've got marketing guidelines of things that you can and cannot say. Um, there are rebating laws. Basically, you can't say if you buy uh, if you uh, if you buy this policy, I'm going to give you this. Um, so there, there are some rules and regulations of doing that. Now there's always ways to go around and present different ways, but just know that there's some limitations there. Also to sell an insurance policy, you have to be a licensed agent. Now it's fairly easy to become a licensed agent, and I'm not telling you you have to go out and become a licensed agent. Just know that as you are, if you get some crazy ideas that you're like, hey, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna sell a bunch of policies, uh, you know, before you know, the next couple of weeks and prove that this works, just know that that's illegal, uh, unless you're tied in with another insurance brokerage or, or someone else. If that's something that you're interested in, by all means reach out to me, I can pair you up with someone that would be, and you can work out some type of lead generation fee or something else along those lines. Also, uh, if you are interested, and, and we put the APIs out there as a a potential for you to use. You don't have to incorporate them. It's just, it's a really cool tool. To give you an idea, one of our startup companies this last year went from zero dollars in revenue 
at the beginning of the year to the end of 2018 and receiving a hundred million dollar valuation by tapping into our APIs. Uh, that is the power of what I'm throwing out there. And we've got a handful of other companies that are tapping into it that all have raised at least 45 to 60 million dollars. Like there is money out there to invest in companies that do that. So that's why I'm throwing that out there. You do not have to build into it, just letting you know that they exist out there. Uh, the other thing that would be available for anyone that is interested in building into the APIs, uh, happy to set up about an hour demo uh, where we walk you through, of here's what's available. We also have uh, 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 basically, you know, here is all of, uh, here are all the guidelines and here are uh, your product guide for being able to do that. So. There are a lot of opportunities there, uh, but kind of overall, just letting you guys know, this is a pretty exciting industry to be in, especially right now. You know, maybe 10, 15 years, this will blow over, but this is definitely the new FinTech wave and there's a lot of money being put in here. So I think it, uh, it would be pretty exciting to have some companies based out of the Midwest come up and do this. So anyway, I'll open it up to questions, unless everyone is completely befuddled and has like no clue. We tried to make the challenge